Ladies and gentlemen, would you please join me in welcoming the man responsible for tonight's program, William Franklin Brinton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is W.F. Brinton. Please call me Frank. I was a resident of Washington, Iowa. I say was because I died in the year 1919. In life, I was a showman. I didn't sing, I didn't dance, but I put on extravaganzas along with my wife, Indiana, who was 20 years my junior. That's right, her first name was Indiana. Together, we traveled the Midwest. At first, I showed magic lantern slides and gave lectures of faraway lands, and then a new technology emerged, the silent moving film. As we took my silent movies on the road, they were wildly popular. We drew people from far and wide. At one time, we were the highest paid people in the state of Iowa. But in death, time changed, and my silent movies were lost. Thankfully, three decades ago, they were rescued, found by the gentleman that I will introduce in just a moment. It will be my pleasure this evening to serve as your projectionist. But first, a little housekeeping. This performance is sponsored by the National Endowment for the Arts. Artist sponsorship is by Don and Irene Hamus, Vic and Jan Naxera, in memory of their beloved brother, Max. If you did not pick up a comment card, there are some in the back. Red Cedar loves when you put down comments about their program, and there are pencils in the rear as well. My films that you will see tonight have been lovingly put to music by Red Cedar Chamber Music. I would like to introduce the ensemble for you now. On flute, the effervescent Jan Boland. Our cellist who plays with such flair, Carrie Boston. And on guitar, a minstrel for the ages, John Dowdham. And now, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the man who is truly responsible for our being here tonight. Because, as I said, he rescued my movies. He's been waiting over 30 years for a night such as this. But I have been waiting over 100. I give you the incomparable historian, an Iowa treasure, if ever there was one, Michael Zaz. Thank you, Frank. I've always been an admirer of Frank Brinton and never anticipated getting to work with him. It's been great fun. Tonight, you're going to be seeing some of Mr. Brinton's movies. You may have seen them in the past, because Mr. Brinton appeared here in Tipton several times. So you may recognize some of these films, especially if you were going to films here in 1905 and 1906. You will recognize some of these films. As Frank said, he passed away in 1919. He and his wife had operated the Graham Opera House in Washington, and the Graham Opera House in Washington is now the State Theater, and that venue has shown movies longer than any other place on Earth, and it's in Iowa. And the movies you're going to see tonight started there. When Frank died, Indiana no longer uh, traveled the entertaining circuit. Their material went to the basement of their house. When she died in 1955, the executor of her estate moved the things to his basement. When he became elderly, 
his son and I by chance met and he wanted to get rid of the stuff which he valued highly because it was in boxes labeled Brenton C-R-A-P. <laughs> so the week that my wife Julie and I, and she's in the front row here, were married 33 years ago, moved three pickup loads of stuff home from that basement. In those pickups loads were about 150 fills of which you'll see 20-some tonight. The newest of these films is 1908. The oldest film in the United States is 1894. You'll see a film tonight from 1895. This is considered the most significant collection of early film on Earth right now. Also in the collection were over 700 magic lantern slides and fabulous records that would say, when you go to Tipton, this is the hotel you stay in. This is the person you get to meet the train and carry your luggage. This is where uh, you put the bill to best advertise the program. That kind of record exists of their travels all over from Texas to Minnesota. It's a fabulous record. Some of the movies that you're going to see tonight have not been shown in over 100 years. We started this program in March, and that was the first time they were shown in public for many, many years. The Library of Congress copied some of the films 33 years ago, and the rest of the films were copied recently at Media Preserve in Pittsburgh. The originals of the Britain films are housed under archival conditions in Pittsburgh and the Library of Congress. And we have visited both places and will again this summer. The first movie that you're going to see, the first two movies that you saw tonight, are the oldest known movie from India and the oldest known movie from Egypt. I hope you can just a little bit understand the significance of what you're watching tonight. No one else in the world is watching it. And much of what you're seeing is the only copy available anywhere. So. Consider yourself special, set up straighter in your seat, and enjoy the night. The next film is a US made film called The Suburbanite. And it's a little bit longer film. Most films from 1900 were just maybe a minute long. This film is um, about 10 minutes long. And just the storyline. A family lived in New York City. They thought it best to move the children to the suburbs. So they moved to the suburbs, and everything just goes splendidly, except the move, the mud the children play in, the visiting in-laws, the hard trying to get help, missing the train back into town to work, and other than that, everything went well. So we will watch here the Suburbanite, made in the United States in 1904. And notice the little children playing with mud, trying to look like their father. 